This is Introduction to Arduinos, the blinking light tutorial. Have you ever wanted to know how a blinking light works? In today's lesson, you will learn. This course will include suggested skills, a review of required materials, and three parts to complete. Each part will have goals to complete and questions to answer. Questions may be multiple choice, fill in the blank, or image based. Upon completion of this course, you'll be asked to reflect on your learning. Course prerequisites include a background with Arduinos and circuitry along with familiarity of object-oriented programming. By the end of this course, you'll be able to assemble a breadboard with electronic components, write computer code, and create a blinking light. Your course materials will require an electronics kit to include the following parts. One LED, I will be using red, but any color such as yellow or green is okay. One 220 ohm resistor. Three wires. Red will be used for positive. The black wire will be used for ground or negative. And another wire, in this case yellow, to connect the resistor. You also need an Arduino. Any kind is okay. A USB cable to connect the Arduino to the computer and a breadboard. My breadboard is a little bit bigger. If you have a smaller one, that is okay. The first step of your blinking light tutorial is to connect your power wires to the breadboard and the Arduino. The red power wire gets plugged into the positive power rail of the breadboard and the black wire gets plugged into the negative section of the breadboard. On the Arduino you will note it has two sections a power pin section and a digital pin section. Take the red power wire and plug it into the part that says 5 volts. As shown here, the negative wire will be plugged into the section of the digital pin that says ground. As shown here. Resistor and bend each lead or wire coming off of it to 90 degrees or somewhere in the middle. You do not want to bend too close to the actual resistor as doing so may result in damage to it. When you're finished, your resistor should look something like this. Now that you have your resistor bent at 90 degrees, the next step is to place it into the breadboard. Place one end of the resistor somewhere in the negative part, like so and then the other part of the resistor anywhere else on the breadboard. Note that the resistor has been placed into the negative power rail on one side and then the other side has been placed into the breadboard at row 15, column C. You do not need to place it at row 15, column C. You can place it wherever you'd like. Just for this example, that's where I've decided to place it. Your next step is to take the last wire and put one end into the Arduino at pin 0 and one end into the column and row above the resistor. Notice that I've taken one end of the wire and have placed it into row 14, column C, and then on the Arduino I have put the other end into digital pin 0. It is important that the other side of the power wire is plugged into digital pin 0 for purposes that will become clear when you start coding. The next step is to insert your LED into the breadboard. You'll note that the LED, unlike the resistor, has two different sized leads. The shorter lead, which is a negative lead, is called the cathode. The longer lead, which is a positive lead, 
is called an anode. One easy way to remember them is that I always like to think that a cat is short, hence cathode is the shorter side. The, to place the LED onto the breadboard, the anode, the longer side, must be in the same row as the wire. The shorter side, the cathode, must be in the same row as the resistor, like so. The cathode goes into the hole next to the resistor, and the anode goes in the hole next to the port wire, and once you put it in, press down to make sure it's snug. The, the final part of assembling your breadboard requires you to install the USB cable. I've installed it on my Arduino, and once I install the other end into my computer, the circuit will be complete and the LED should come on. You'll note that my LED is on and the circuit is complete. If your LED is not on, the most likely culprit is a mix-up between the anodes and the cathodes. Try pulling out the LED, rotating it, and then putting it back in so that the anode and the cathode are in its correct location. Now let's assess your knowledge. Try to get all three correct. Please pause the video and read the question. When you're ready, hit play for the answer. The correct answer is A, because anodes are long and cathodes are short. If you said the LED is incorrectly placed, that is correct. To correctly place the LED, its leads need to be placed in front of the wire and... Please pause the video and read the question. When you're ready, hit play for the answer. The correct answer is B. To fix it, try repositioning the LED to ensure the cathodes and anodes are in the correct location. Congrats! This completes part one. Part two will involve coding to make the light blink. Welcome to part two, coding the light. Your goal is to write computer code to make the light blink. Please make sure you've installed the Arduino software. If you haven't, you can retrieve the software from arduino.cc. Please also note, my software that I am using may be different than yours. Please adjust accordingly. Before we begin programming the light, it is important that the code is written exactly as demonstrated. An incorrectly spelled word can result in an error. Placing a semicolon after each line is a coding best practice because when you add another line of code, you won't need to remember to add a semicolon. Finally, watch your braces. Code must be between them in order for it to work. This is the Arduino software. It is based on the C language. Variables are created with INT. In this example, we create one variable called LED pin and assign it the zero pin. We then move to the setup section, which contains the functions needed to set up the program. We use a function called pin mode, and it contains our variable and output, which will output a signal via the zero pin. We then move to the loop section, which contains the loop needed to make the light blink. We use a function called digital write, and it contains our variable and high, which turns the light on. We then use a delay function to delay the light for 1000 milliseconds, or one second. We then use the digital write function again, but include low to turn the light off. Once that is written, we will add another delay function and set it to 1000 milliseconds to complete the blink. When you're done, you want to save it and then verify the code. Let's take a quiz. Try to get all three correct. Pause the video, then hit play to hear the answers. The answer for number one is D. The answer for number two is D because each 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second. The answer for three is the yellow wire because the pin number the variable is assigned is where the signal gets outputted to. In order to start the light, you do three things. Make sure you have the right programmer set, make sure your COM port is set, and make sure you're on the right board. Once all three have been checked, go ahead and hit the upload button to upload your code. Awesome job! You've built and coded a blinking light. The final section will be some reflection questions.